all ye of little faith. <laughs> First Samuel chapter 23, verse 8. I've got a word from you. How many want to hear from the Lord? So I'm telling you, right in this room right now are some heroes. From what I've heard said this morning, you've just lost some mighty men to the kingdom of God, to the new kingdom, the heavenly kingdom. But in that place, in this building right now, there are some men that are willing to stand up to the plate and become mighty. First Samuel chapter 23, verse 8. These be the names of the mighty men whom David had. The Teshemite that sat in the seat, chief amongst the captains. The same was Adino, the Esnite. He lifted up his spear. Oh, I hear pages still turning. Page 567. Second Samuel, I'm sorry, I apologize. I knew that. I just wanted to know if you were sharp. No, I'm just... 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 8. I apologize. I don't do mornings. Actually, this man standing before you is completely asleep. <laughs> I'm sleepwalking in your mid <laughs> Oh, wait till I wake up, folks. We're going to have choice. <laughs> Now these be the names of the mighty men, da the mighty men whom David had, the Teshemite that sat in the seat, chief amongst the captains. The same was Adino, the Esnite. Now leave your Bible open there. And he lifted up his spear against eight hundred whom he slew at one time. Father God, I am less than the least of all your servants. I am smart enough, however, to know when you have spoken to my heart and just say that which you have spoken. But God, when you put something in here, it's sometimes harder to get it out. I ask, Lord God, that only this morning that you would make me your fiery finger. That I'm not speaking to the minds of men, but I speak to the hearts of men. And I pray, Lord, that you would use me as the fiery finger of God. That what I speak this morning would be burned into the hearts of the listener. That it would be like the Ten Commandments. That you would use my voice. That you would use this vessel. That these words would be burned and impressed in our heart. That we would be eternally changed by the power of your word. Now, Lord, I pray that you'd anoint these people to receive, then anoint these altars with a powerful visitation of your visit, of your Holy Ghost. Father, I ask it in the name of Jesus, and the church joined the evangelists and said, Amen and Amen. Every fall, the news media of the world gather in a rather obscure place. I mean, it's a beautiful place, but other than the fact that there's an event there every year, most people, would, when they pick about where they're going to go on vacation, I've talked to a lot of people, I don't usually hear them say, I want to go to Stockholm, Sweden. Now, Sweden is a beautiful country, but it's not a very big country, and you can probably cover it in about 10 minutes. No, not very long. But every year, the eyes of the news media of the world gather in this place called Stockholm, Sweden. Every September or October, there is a prize given out in this city that is called the Nobel Peace Prize. Whoever is the recipient of this prize will become famous throughout history as being a man or a woman that did great things to promote world peace. Many times the people who receive this award are not very well known, but once they receive it, they're never forgotten. Now in this country, many people knew who Martin Luther King was. But when Martin King received the Nobel Peace Prize, the world knew who he was. Now there were some people in the Catholic faith that knew who Mother Teresa was. But when Mother Teresa received the Nobel Peace Prize, the world found out who Mother Teresa was. You couldn't put the television. When she died, they broadcast her funeral worldwide by satellite. Every station that had anything was showing the burial of this woman. 
You see, once you have received this Nobel Peace Prize, you will go down in history. You will be famous as long as there are men. You will be famous as known as a person who did great things in the area of peace. And I can't think of a better thing other than the gospel to be involved in. But what most people don't know is that the man who established that foundation, his name was Alfred Nobel. Most people don't know even why he established the, I know it's a little hicky-joicky here, but hang with me, I'm going somewhere. Most people, and those that know that Alfred Nobel was the one who established the Nobel Peace Prize, most don't know why he did it. You see, Alfred Nobel sat down in a day very much like this one. He sat down, he was troubled, and he sat down in his easy chair. He got out a newspaper, and of all things, he was going to read the obituary. Now, the reason why he was going to read the obituary was that that obituary contained the obituary of his brother, who he just buried. He wanted to see how his brother was remembered by the community. He began to read his brother's obituary. I know this is taking a little time, but bear with me because I am really going somewhere. And to his shock, he, he was very glad that he was sitting down because as he began to read it, to his shock, he found out that the papers had made an error and they thought it was Elfert that died and not his brother. Imagine the opportunity to get to read your obituary before you die. Imagine to find out what people really think about you while you can still get even. <laughs> What an opportunity. He began to read his obituary, and most people don't know this, but Albert Nobel, or Alfred Nobel was an inventor. He invented many things, and his wealth that he amassed in order to establish the Nobel Foundation was because of the money he made from his inventions. And as he began to read his obituary, to his shock, all they talked about was one of his inventions. You see, Alfred Nobel was the man who invented dynamite. Most people don't know that either. And as he read his obituary, he thought they would talk about all the good things that had been done through his invention, making coal mining safer, just an innumerable amount of things that blessed humanity. But all they talked about was how many people had died because of this man's invention. He, they talked about the destruction that dynamite had caused and the lives that it had taken and, and all the things that had, people had been hurt by it. As he read his obituary to his horror, he began to realize that his name was associated with a weapon of mass destruction. And all the good that he had done in his life was forgotten. And all they could think about was the fact that this man had invented something that had taken the lives of thousands and perhaps millions of people. That very day, he made a decision. He realized that if he didn't change something that his family's name would go down in history as a name that meant destruction, as a name that meant pain, as a name that meant death. And the very next business day, he went to the bank and withdrew a large amount of his riches he had amassed and he set up the Nobel Foundation of which came the Nobel Peace Prize. He wanted to change the way that he would be remembered by humanity. What an opportunity. I believe he succeeded, don't you? Because when, when you hear the name Nobel, you don't think about war. Yeah, I know it's like a joke, but I'm going somewhere. You don't think about mass destruction. You think about peace. Everywhere the name Nobel is spoken, you think instantly about the Peace Prize. He was successful in changing the way that he was remembered. But in order to do that, he needed to change himself. And what I'm saying, God forbid, but let's say today would be the last day of your life, sir. Every father and future father in this place. 
How would you like to be remembered? What would you like listed in your obituary? If you had an opportunity this morning to change some things, would there be some things that you think you might want to change about how you would be remembered by this world? See, most of us don't get an opportunity to do that. But he did. You see, and I know there's some people sitting here saying, Brother John, if I'm dead, I really ain't going to care how they remember me. Well, you ought to care. Because the way you are remembered is exactly how you are viewed right now. The way you're remembered is how people think of you right now. But if you're going to change how you are remembered, you must change some things in your life. You see, everything about you, everything that will be remembered about you will be decided by one. Everybody pull on your ear. Make sure you're listening to this one. Everything that will be in your obituary will be primarily decided by one factor in your entire life. The situations in which you encounter and the choices you make at that situation. You see, oh, you say, brother, I don't believe it. I can prove it. You read the obituaries. You, you, pastor talked about two great men of God who've went on to their reward. They remember, uh, the saddest thing in the world is to go to a funeral where nobody cries. I, I, if I go to a funeral, I want to see sobbing. I, when I die, Brother Loper, if the, when I die, my children are going to be there. My wife's going to be there. I'm going to invite the neighbors. I'm going to give them parting words of wisdom. You only get to do it one time. When you leave this world, do it right. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm Italian. I want an emotional. I want it sad. I, I, and, and the saddest thing is to go to a funeral where nobody sheds a tear and nobody cries because that person is a miss. That person didn't make a difference in anybody's life. So nobody really cares that they're gone. See, it's all about the choices you make. You don't believe that? Just read the obituaries. You can read where a college professor has died. An Olympic athlete has died. You can read where, where a preacher died, where, where, where some great mother or teacher or, or, or scholar or poet or singer or musician, you can read where they died. But in that same newspaper, there's birth announcements. And I've read a lot of them. And I've never read a, a birth announcement that said an eight pound, nine ounce baby preacher was born today. I never read a birth announcement that said an Olympic athlete was born today. A great preacher was born today. You become what you are by the choices that you make in your life. Oh, there's ikuratarabasandarabahasatai. You see, God's speaking to this choice. This is your greatest hour. There is a nation out there that is begging for answers. And honey, we got the answer. Jesus Christ is the answer. Bear with me. I can prove this point by a, a true story. And it is an absolutely true story that you can research for yourself. A young man went out for his high school basketball team. Absolutely true story. There are 12 members of this team. Five starters, five bench players or reserves in case one of the starters get hurt. And then two more bench players that are backups for the bench players. In the first tryout, this young man was cut by his coach. He was not even good enough to be a backup player to the backup players. His coach told him to pursue some other sport because, young man, you will never have the ability to play ba a basketball. You ought to play some baseball. You're more suited for that. But that young man refused to receive that report. And he changed some things. He worked hard. He dedicated himself. He gave himself to a spirit of excellence. And I believe that Michael Jordan did okay for himself. Because he made choices. In the voices, you say, oh, Brother John, I'm not six foot six, and, and, and I can't, I, can't, I don't have hang time, and, and I'm not going to be, I'm a, some of you are saying, I'm a woman, I can't be Michael Jordan. No, you can't. And chances are, neither will I. 
but there's something I can be that's more important than being the scoring title leader there's something you and I can be that God wants us to be that's more important than six NBA titles and ten rings for scoring titles there's something you and I all can be this morning that God wants us to be that we all have the potential to be that God would make us with his help we can become it if we will do it if we'll be willing to make the changes see I talked to you or read a voice of scripture about David's mighty men they were 37 of them in all that before I go any further just look at what some of these guys did one man everybody say this with me no excuses when you were born you were born just like me whatever you weighed you were a beautiful bundle of joy but you also were a bundle of potential you could become anything you wanted to do and what you become is totally decided by the choices that you make in this world would somebody give the Lord a hand you were born with the same potential I'm hurrying but I'm not gonna hurry so fast I lose you look at some of these the first guy lists here killed 800 guys in one war one fight now I don't know the devil is pretty stupid to take on God but these guys must have just lined up in a line step forward let him kill him then the next guy step forward I have no clue how one guy could kill 800 guys in one fight but he did it because the Bible said he did the, 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 the next guy and this, I thought about you brother Loper because everybody's been in this one the next guy goes to war he's got a great big army with them the army sees the enemy coming they get scared witless and he says come on guy come on let's get him let's get him and he turns around he's standing there by himself hey, amen and he 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 fights until the bible says that the sword clave to his hand they had to pry his fingers off the sword because his head sword because his hand had literally conformed to the shape of the handle and then the rest of the army came back for the real dangerous job of you know gathering the spoils it's okay brother Loper you 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 done enough you you fought to your hand clay to the sword I'm gonna do this dangerous job of sticking my hand in this dead man's pocket and taking his money I'm gonna do the dangerous job of picking the gold up off the you that says a lot about that man he because honey if, if I gotta fight a whole army by myself Byron I ain't letting you have my gold you go fight your own army His, that tells me this man had qualities to be willing to fight an entire army till he gets the victory and then let everyone that ran share in the blessing somebody thank God for men and women don't, don't run in the battle and we all share the blessing because every one of us have run at some time or another then the next guy he's one of my favorites Shama Oh, Shama, Shama, he, he stands in the middle of a bean patch and fights an entire army. This guy's probably the best of them all. He's probably the mightiest man of them all. These other guys are fighting for somebody's life, usually their own. I mean, you can take a little bitty rat and stick it in a corner and corner it. It'll put up a fight because his life's on the line this guy is fighting over a beam I mean I fought 117 fights in the ring and I got some money for it but I never fought over a beam you can have the beam take the if I thought I could whip the guy I ain't gonna hurt my hands for a beam he said, I agree with you, Brother John. It ain't worth it to fight for beans. But see, that's really the problem of the church today. See, the Bible says, give no place to the devil. Today, he'll take your bean. Tomorrow, it'll be your wife or your daughter or your business or your home. You give the devil an inch, honey, he'll take a mile every single time. He said, Brother John, I, I don't think your problem... You don't understand. It's my bean. Say, Brother John, I don't think it's, you don't understand. It's my thoughts. It's my emotions. 
it's my desires it's my ambitions it's my family and I'm gonna fight for him and if you're ever gonna become a mighty man or a mighty woman of God the day is gonna have to come where you stand up to the devil and say not one more bean no more beans no no more no more beans I'm hurrying but I gotta go somewhere with this did, did you ever just think something out loud I'm Italian I'm constantly talking to myself I'm starting to worry now since I turned I'm a little over 40 and I'm answering now and that's not good I'm trying to think y'all do that I agree <laughs> But did you ever think out loud? You, you, you really didn't mean it as a directive, but, but, but you thought it. And David's sitting around one day and he said, man, what I wouldn't give, j j j just to have a cup of water out of the well of Bethlehem. And three of his men hear it. And these three mighty men fought two hundred men to get their king a glass of water David got it and he said oh no I can't drink this 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 is the life this is your blood there's only one person that can receive the blood so he poured it out as a sacrifice unto God but they were willing to risk everything just to satisfy the whim of their king I call that love I call that character I call that being a mighty man and then the next guy he 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 kills 300 guys in one fight now I know the first guy killed 800 in one fight and I know 300 ain't nearly 800, but to be honest with you, sir, I'd have been impressed with 200. Be honest with you, it's been a long time since I've been up 200 guys at the same time. To be quite honest with you, I'd probably been impressed with 200. Be honest with you, I'd, I'd been impressed with 100. And I've been in revival almost all this year. I've been home very little, you know, and... And, 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 and after I've been in revival several weeks like this, I, I'd be impressed if I could beat up three midgets. <laughs> but, but this guy kills 300 men in one fight. And, and there's another guy here. He kills two lion-like men. They actually had the very appearance. You've heard of werewolves? They were were-lions. They didn't change into it. They looked like that all the time. The same guy follows a lion down in his den on a snowy day. He goes down a pit and kills the lion in his home territory. I'm tired of waiting at church, waiting for the devil to show up with some problem to rise up. And then we fight. I think it's time to leave here and go find the lion's den and go down and kill him in his pit. I think it's time to hunt him out. The, the same guy kills a goodly Egyptian. The word goodly means huge. The only other place the word huge is used to describe a man in the Bible is Goliath. The same guy kills a lion, kills two lion-like were lions, and then he goes kills a huge. When God calls a man huge, he's huge. You see, you can't be the next Michael Jordan, but you can become a mighty man. You can become a mighty man. God wants you and I to become mighty. God wants every woman in this place to become a mighty woman. God wants every man in this place to become a mighty man. When you leave this world, how do you want to be remembered? Do you want to be remembered as a choice goer or do you want to be remembered as a mighty man? When your children stand and look down at you in that coffin, what do you want them to remember? Somebody that went to choice faithfully on Sunday or do you want them to see a man that killed giants? Do you want to see him a man that subdued kingdoms? Do you want to see him... And I know what you're thinking. I'm hurrying, but I'm going to... Brother Loper said I didn't have to hurry too much. 
But I've got a word for this church. God does not want this church to be known as Garywood Assembly simply. God wants this church to be known as the place where the mighty men go, where the mighty women go. God wants this church to be known as a place of mighty men. And I know what you're thinking, Brother John. Uh, you don't understand. I I'm, I'm not like you. Thank God I couldn't read when I got saved. Thank God. Uh, Brother John, you understand, I, I'm not brave. I'm not tough. I, I can't do it. I, I, I just can't be mighty. Oh, you know what I feel like doing sometimes? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Don't be wrong. I wouldn't do it. But I feel like getting a gun and walking up to him and going, now, get mighty. I can't change. You got five minutes. Change. You got four minutes, 45 seconds, change. You can be mighty. How do you know? Because these men did not start out mighty. How do you know that, Brother John? First Samuel chapter 22. Bear, bear with me. I, I know it's hoiky-joiky, but this whole revival depends on this service. Because this is not just a neat little choice revival. This is God saying, I want to make you a mighty woman. I want to make you a woman that lions fear. I want to make you a woman that giants fear. I want to make you a man that can kill 800 demons in one fight. I want to make you a woman that can slay 300 demons in one. I want to make this church to be a place that warriors walk out of. I want to make you mighty men and mighty women. But you've got to be willing to change. If you're not willing to change, you'll be what you are right now when you die. Except old. Hopefully. 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 1 and 2. David therefore departed and escaped to a cave at Adullam. And when his brethren and all of his father's house hoid it, they went down thither to him. And everyone that was in distress, you know what distress is? A scared. Everyone that was bound by a spirit of fear. And everyone that was in debt. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Anybody in? No, we all are. <laughs> and everyone that was discontented, you know what discontented means? Bitter. Scared, broke, and bitter. Everyone that was discontented became a captain over them, and they were with him about 400 men. Can you see David? He's being hunted by a demon-possessed king that's already killed 80 innocent priests that has the most powerful army in the world and that entire army is looking for him. He finally hides out in the wilderness and he finds a cave and he sits down and if things aren't bad enough, folks, he finally gets his place. He says, this is bad. This is bad. But at least I can think it out now. At least maybe I can get a couple hours sleep. Have, have you ever been so scared and so troubled that you had no peace and you had no rest and you couldn't think? So David says, finally, I'm going to get to work some of these things out. And he's sitting there in his cave and all of a sudden he hears a rustling in the bushes. He says, oh no, they found me. And out staggers this guy. Clothes is all torn. Pockets are hanging out. Ain't, looks like he ain't at in a week and hasn't taken a bath in a month. David has to laugh despite his circumstances. He says, just who in the, or what in the world are you? Well, <laughs> my name's Bankrupt. <laughs> what you doing out here? Well, I'm hiding from my creditors, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and if I had to hide from my creditors, I heard things were going kind of bad for you. And they're going bad for me. So I thought maybe if I could find you out here that you and I could hang out together, you know, misery loves company and, and we can have bad breaks together. Then comes the stress. Bitter. Broke people are hard to get along with, but bitter broke people are rough. Then you throw in fearful, Brother Loper. And here's this guy surrounded by 400 guys, bankrupt, bitter, and fearful man 
I better have revival or they're going to drive me out of my mind. I'm going to have choice here. And the Bible says that because of his anointing, he was able to form them into an army of 400. It is my understanding that these 37 mighty men came out of that 400. They started out distressed. They started out bankrupt. They started out bitter. They started out fearful. But 37 of them ended up becoming mighty men. And wherever this Bible is read, you have no choice but call them mighty. Because God said they were mighty men. They were mighty in God. It's not what you are right now. It's not what you've been your whole life. If you're willing to change you can become a mighty man if you're willing to change you can become a mighty woman you may be bitter you may be distressed you somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise while I get filled up with some old juice bear with me but if you are going to become mighty one thing I need to tell you you need to get a mentor you need to have somebody it is a wise man that knows that he is not so wise. You need to get somebody that knows more than you know. I have a mentor, and I, he has the right given to him by me to correct me, to tell me I did something wrong, to call me up at any time and ask me personal questions about my life because I have chosen to be accountable to somebody. I chose him because he was wiser than I am, because he was smarter than I am, and he was, could change me and make me better and, and help me straighten me out if I get messed up. <laughs> See, these 400 men started out losers. But because 37 of them were willing to be mentored by David, they started out as loser, bankrupt, distressed, bitter people. And when their life ended, God said, for all of eternity, they are mighty. They were mighty men. You, let me tell you something, they earned it too, pal. You don't get an honorary mighty. You're not born mighty. You can't buy mighty. You are called a mighty man because you've done something mighty with your life. I'm not talking about killing giants I'm talking about killing those giants that are putting drugs in our street I'm talking about putting a stop to the revival of the devil by having a revival of God I need some men that are willing to be mighty but you see if you're not willing to be mentored you'll never be mighty because you don't have the M I'm gonna tell you something else if you want to be mighty what you got to have you got to have integrity I'm going to tell you something, integrity. And, and, and there's a lot of areas I could cover here, but let's start with the most simplest one. You have got to become a man or a woman of your word. It takes a lifetime to build a good name. It takes one mistake to destroy it. Somebody get the Lord. Just one. We say, you say, Brother John, you don't understand. Oh, you can change. How's David remembered? Can anybody tell me what God calls David? A man after what? An adulterous murderer? He changed. And if we know somebody that has messed up and they have truly humbled themselves and they have truly repented and we see change in their life, then it is up to us to have the humility and the grace and the mercy to restore them because there's not a person in this room that's been 100% true to your word your entire life. You may not have meant to lie, but you committed to do something that you never followed up with. Well, can, can someone give the Lord a hand? You committed, but you didn't do it. Now, I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying. But, but, but you will never be mighty without integrity because you won't have the eye. And if you want to be a mighty man or a woman, you, you've got to become generous. You, you, you've got to be a giver. All these mighty men had one thing in common. They were willing to give it all for the well-being of somebody else. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. How many believe you can't become a mighty man or woman of God unless you become like God? If you're not generous, you can't be like God. How do you know, Brother John? Because God looked down to the lost world and he gave his very best so we could be blessed. 
You can never become a mighty man or a woman of God. And see, Abraham received the promise, but when he gave his tithe, he got the blessing. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of prayer. Somebody worship him. I'm hurrying because I, I've got something to do here. See, you can't be mighty unless you become generous because you won't have the G. And you, you can't be a mighty man or woman of God without humility. See, how many believe Moses was pretty mighty? I think he was. He set a whole nation free with a stick. I don't know, man, the neighborhood you grew up in, man. I grew up in Chicago. If a guy came in Chicago and whooped the whole city of Chicago with a stick, I'd be impressed. <laughs> he had a bad man. See, God's calling every father here to leave a legacy for your sons. What are you willing to change to be mighty? He's calling every mother here to leave a legacy for the young ladies of this church. What are you willing to do that when you leave this world, they'll say, a mighty woman? You got to have humility because the greatest deliverer of all time besides Jesus, God chose Moses because he was the most humble man in the entire country, in the world. You see, you'll never be mighty if you take the credit that belongs to God. You'll never be mighty when you lay hands on somebody and God heals them in his goodness and mercy and then you think you're the healer. Oh, I'm telling you, this is from God. I, I, I know you may not, I'm not a great pre I'm not even a good preacher. But I'm from the Lord this morning. I'm telling you, God wants to make Garywood mighty. God wants to make the men and women of this church mighty. But only those that are willing to change. You see, you can't be mighty without the H. And you can't be mighty unless you get some tenacity. You got to get that attitude that I'm just not going to quit. No matter how bad I fail, no matter how low I go, I'm just not going to quit. See, listen to, you got to become a bulldog. I, I don't remember how many dogs we got at home. Sarah, how many dogs we got? We got four or something like, we got dogs. It's been a long, I mean, it seems like forever. But I don't have a bulldog, but they're so ugly, they're cute, you know? You know, you know, the bulldog with the smashed face, and they weigh 50 to 80 pounds, and they're bow-legged, and they stand about this high off the ground. Do you know how they got the name Bulldog? They were bred to fight bulls. And more times than not, they would win. Now, how does a 50 to 80-pound dog, no bigger than this, kill a 2,000-pound bull? Because he was designed for tenacity. His jaws locked. So he grabbed the bull by the throat and just lock in. And then what the bull would do to kill most dogs, which are much larger, and he would beat them, he would just go like this and beat their bodies into the ground, and the body would break their bones, and they'd let go of the hole, and the bull would just gore to death, and it would be dead. But see, when you are a short little bulldog, he can go like this, and your legs don't reach the ground. <laughs> And a 50 to 80 pound dog could kill a 2,000 pound bull because they had something called tenacity. If you're going to be mighty for God, don't look at the times you fell down. Bite a hold of that problem and do not let go. Hold on to that. Hold on to it until God gives you the victory. I'm telling you, to, you have the ability to be mighty through God. And finally... I came to the why. You can't be mighty without tenacity because you won't have the T, but I got to the why and I had might. I thought I'd never come up with anything for the why. Well, there ain't a lot of weights that start with why, pal. And then I found, I realized the only thing it could possibly be. If you're going to be mighty, this, I got a word to you from the Lord. This is where it's got to start. See, this is where the rubber is going to meet the road. I know it's Father's Day. I'm a father. And I know you have places to go, and I thank God that you have places to go. 
but my home is about nine hours from here. I ain't going home today. And I'm not saying, trying to make you feel sad. What I'm trying to tell you, if you don't want to make a sacrifice, you will never be mighty. Mighty men, we need just a couple men that are willing to die for this thing. We can take the whole United States back. We can put an end to this AIDS outbreak. We can put an end to all the murdering in our schools. Our kids won't get shot at school if we just can get a couple men that will die for this thing. Listen to me. This is the one that we have to start with this morning. Because if you don't do this, you can have all the other things in principle, but if you don't do this, you'll never be mine. See, you've got to yield. When I ask you to come to these altars and I lay hands on you, do you know that's ten times harder than preaching? And the more people resist the Holy Ghost, the harder it is. But you see, Jesus said, all power has been given unto me both in heaven and earth. You, you will never be mighty without the power of God. I mean, that, that's, sir, that's as common sense as common sense can get. He said to the early church, he said, and you shall receive power. And I'm not talking about Gary Wood, but I'm telling you, I've been to a lot of churches that were birthed in Pentecost, and now they're trying to get rid of Pentecost. But Jesus said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. When we lose the Holy Ghost, guess what, folks? We lost power. He says, all power, both in heaven and earth, has been given unto me. But you can receive this power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Would somebody get... Shut Now I'm telling you, you don't have to. Now I'm a dancer. I told you I am. You don't have to act like me. You don't have to look like me. But you will never be mighty without the power of the Holy Ghost. Look to that person next to you and say, we need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. Intellect does not whoop devils. I fought 117 fights in the ring. 114 of them. Not proud of that. But I fought. I, I never once met a professor in the middle of the ring. Why? Because he was too smart to be out there. That's why. But I'm telling you something. If you're going to fight the devil for your wife and your children and your family and your country and your community, you better get some power. You better have more than brains. You better have some power to go with the brains. I, I'm, I'm all for learning. <laughs> I am. But sometimes, man, you got to get your knuckles doity. Sometimes you got to look at that devil and say, devil, not one more being. Not one more blessing. Not one more of my children. Not one more of the things that belong. To, and I will get my knuckles doity on your face if you won't. He said, all power has been given unto me, both heaven and earth. He said, and you shall receive power. When are you going to get power? After that. Not before. You can read about all the faith books you want, but you will have knowledge without power until the Holy Ghost comes on you. Can I get a witness? Just... And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then he said, now, now here's the gig. Now I'm closing. Really, I am. <laughs> How do you whoop 800 guys at one time? I don't have a clue. I, they, I, I don't, 800 guys, man. I can't make it through a council meeting. You know, I, it's, <laughs> no, please, no. <laughs> I 
I'm not talking about y'all. You know what I'm talking. How many of y'all saw? Oh, excuse me, man. This is good stuff. I've been crazy. <laughs> How do you go up to lion like men? How do you kill a huge Egyptian when he's got a spear and you got a stick? How do you go down a pit of a lion and kill him with your bare hands? How do you kill 300 guys at one time? I know how. See, I know how. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. <laughs> Come on, give it up, give it up. There's power in us that can lift 800 devils. There's power in us that can kill the lion. There's power in us to make us mighty. but only according to our willingness to yield. According to our willingness to... I'm going to give you a chance in just a minute. Now in him that's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask to think according to the power. Not that the, I'm... anybody has got the power in you. Let me see. Just raise your hands. If you want to... You say, Brother John, you're just putting that out. No, I've been waiting to get that out for a long time. My lips are... I said, if I preach in tongues, they won't understand the word I'm saying. But I he correta la bahasata la bahasata la mahasata. Yet a correta la mabosonda la mahasata. Yanda la mahasata. So what's married you? I'm filled with something. I'm filled with something. Oh yeah, some of you saying you sure are. No, I am. I'm filled with something. But what I got in me don't do no good at all if I don't let it work in me. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think according to the power as the power as you allow the power to work in you. I can make you mighty. I can make you a giant killer. I can make you capable of whooping an entire army by yourself. But you'll never do it without the power of the Holy Ghost. And you'll never do it until you learn how to yield to that same Holy Ghost. You can be full and not yield it. Now I'm taking you somewhere. I want to ask you one question. How many dads are here? Raise your hand, have a daddy. I got two kids, so I'm... Are your children worth dying for? Sir? Look at your beautiful wife. If you don't do it, I'll pray God call you to evangelize. Look at your beautiful wife. Look at her. Tell her she's beautiful. You don't, someone else will, pal. Oh, I miss my baby. Will you die for her? Will you die for? How many are willing to die for your country? We're free tonight because heroes, mighty men, whose names we don't even know. Some of you who survived those wars, you know what I'm talking about. Mighty men. And we wouldn't be free, sir. If they weren't willing to die. Here we sit today in one of the most beautiful churches in the world. Air conditioned. Loved by everybody around us, hopefully. And we won't fight. Now listen, I know there's kids, I know it's been long, but listen. I don't, I don't want to act like that. But that's fine with me, you know. You... <laughs> And we they act like we're, we're grabbing hold of some teddy bear. And I love teddy bears. I'm going to buy one of them teddy bears. 
But we're grabbing hold of the battery of God. And all I'm going to do is be the battery cable that God can send the power from there through me into you. It's called impartation. You want to be mighty? Do you? Are your loved ones worth it? Come here. I'm, I'm not going to embarrass you. I mean, he ain't gonna be, hopefully he ain't the only one going to come. And if, you, if you're scared of coming, when I call you out, don't come. You have to understand something. This is when I get to be a servant. I'm not trying to be Lord over you. I'm trying to serve you. This is... Father, this man wants to be my... I am pardoned to the Holy Ghost. I am... There it is. There it is. You. Shut that up. You. You. Anybody else want to be mighty? I, I, men, women, or children. No, no, I'm going to ask you. You got to choose. You, he could have resisted the Holy Ghost. He could have stood there and said, if it's really God, something will happen. He yielded. You know, I'm sick and tired of giving what my Jesus paid for with his life to people who don't want it. You can't have oil without the blood. You go back to the tabernacle. Honey, you never get to the altar until the blood puts on the altar. I'm not going to be ashamed of this thing that the blood of my Savior paid for. Anybody want to be mighty? Come here. No, he said, she's a woman. Oh, man. I tell you what, the churches would have went under a long time ago if it wasn't for the women. Can I get a witness? You don't understand. All I am is jumper cables. Thank you, sir, for being there. Thank you, sir. He yielded. He could have resisted. He yielded. But you'll never be mighty till you learn to yield. Can I get a Listen, I'm telling you. I'm going to. I am jumper cables. See, you say, Brother John, I'd get something if you were a better preacher. You don't understand it, lady. I'm just a jumper cables. There's a man that's going to die for his family. You're not a father because you biologically produced a child. You're a father when you're willing to die for your child. You're a father when you're willing to say, I don't care what people think about me. We can't make it as a nation anymore without the power of God. Come here. Come here, woman. You say, why would God use you? I'll tell you exactly why. The broken, contrite spirit, God will not fight. Say, Brother John, I'm indebted. I'm distressed. I'm depressed. I'm scared. Perfect. Join God's arm. We'll make a man out of it. Just give me some broken, distressed, depressed, indebted people, and I'll mentor them, and I'll make them mighty through me. To the... Anybody want to be mighty? Uh 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 uh. uh, -uh. I, I'm. Come on. He said, "Yeah, God has long hair, mighties." No, 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 I'm not putting you down, man. Don't get me wrong. When I get full grown, I'll get a full beard. <laughs> no, no. Hey. When we lay back, you know what we're saying to God? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. He that hesitates. <laughs> Get, get him to me. Hurry, hurry. There's power. I want some men. I want some women. I, I want some young men that say, I want to be mighty. I'm tired of being ordinary. I want to be extraordinary. I'm tired of being whooped. I want to. <laughs> Bye.
mighty warrior Dressed for battle Holy Lord of all we see Commander in chief Bring us to attention Lead us in battle To crush the enemy No, you, you say, I don't like that Well, you'll never be mighty without it Well, you're seeing I have not come to you with enticing words of men's wisdom. That won't get the... We got kids being shot in our schools. We better get on fire. We better get the message. 